It's official folks, the automobile market is collapsing. After outperforming housing, fine art, and the stock market, used car values fell to their lowest in over a decade. Electric vehicles are selling for 32% less than a year ago, and owners are falling behind on payments at the greatest rate in history, adding to their agony. Given increased order default rates among millennials and Gen Z, let's talk about why this will be a big issue in 2024 and how to prepare. Because there's a lot going on that few people are talking about. To begin with, you've surely observed that automobile costs have risen dramatically in recent years. Until recently, 80% of new vehicles sold for more than MSRP, which begs the question of what's going on and how badly this will end. Four major categories are coming to an end shortly. The first is that production is limited. A little known thing that many people miss is one of the components required to build an automobile, chips. Until they fail, these semiconductors regulate the car's windows, sensors, ignition, navigation, and almost every other function. Modern automobiles need over an insane 3,000 chips to function. Despite its scale, the automotive industry only consumes 3% of worldwide chip supply, with the remainder going to consumer electronics. As a result, they took priority. Semiconductor chips were limited due to manufacturing delays and workforce constraint, and a supply chain problem, resulting in a lack of new automobiles and artificially low inventories to keep prices high. Second, interest rates are quite low. Buyers may secure low-interest 12-year loans until early 2023. This resulted in increased automobile and housing costs. Auto payments have reached an all-time high with an average of $753 per month due to increasing demand. Vehicle loans now outnumber mortgages and student loans are the third biggest debt category, accounting for more than $1.5 trillion. Automobile costs increased in tandem with Americans buying power. The third reason is that people are keeping their vehicles longer. Low interest fixed rate mortgages deter homeowners from relocating. Our owners are next. According to a July survey, buyers are retaining their automobiles for longer periods of time, which is lowering supply. Why purchase a new automobile with a new loan, taxes and troubles if you can keep the one you have? Finally, reason number four deals with greed. This is to be anticipated given that corporations emphasize shareholder value. Automobile manufacturers charge more since they produce fewer automobiles. According to Kelly Blue Book, manufacturers purposefully understate demand. BMW says it would create fewer automobiles in order to keep prices stable. Here are the important facts about the car market's future and why it's more serious than it seems. Expect to be surprised by how much automobile costs have fallen. Car Gurus, which assesses millions of vehicles every day, showed a 1% decrease in pricing last month. Tesla had the largest price decrease, with prices 33% lower than last year. Tesla is mostly responsible for lower electric vehicle prices. To compete, other manufacturers had to decrease their pricing in order to sell more vehicles. There are currently more used EVs on the market than new ones. As a result, used automobile sales are stealing market share from new car sales. Furthermore, numerous automobile models have received price reductions in the last year. Crossovers are down 6.3%, hatchbacks are down 9.91%, wagons are down 9.98%, and vans are down more than 10%. Although automobile costs are greater than they were before the pandemic, they are decreasing. This raises concerns about how low costs will fall and if the car industry will fail. Let's discuss vehicle dealerships. Car Edge, a YouTube channel, identified a big selling danger. Interest rates are quite high. Dealerships, they said, acquire automobiles on credit. As a result, dealership automobiles are often financed. Every day a car goes unsold at a dealership despite borrowing rates being at a 20-year high. It will be more expensive for them. For example, holding a pickup truck on a lot cost the dealership $2 to $4 per day in interest two years ago. It's now more than $12 each day. This indicates that dealerships are selling off existing inventory more quickly, and that if they wait, they may lose money on their vehicles. Concerning the car loan bubble, cars degrade rapidly, yet the market in 2020 to 2022 was typical. A new car loses 11% of its value instantly, and 63% after five years. Banks have lent on pricey automobiles in recent years, owning to strong demand and limited availability. 
At the time, a $45,000 loan for a Toyota Corolla seemed logical, but customers today owe much more than the car's worth. Many individuals wind up with vehicles that are worth less than their loans, particularly now that interest rates are so high that refinancing is less enticing. Banks anticipate an increase in loan defaults if the situation worsens. Banks are lending more cautiously as automobile prices plummet. They are concerned with loan conditions and beneficiaries. Borrowers' loans are becoming more costly as interest rates rise higher than in prior years. Because of the growing number of customers who are unable to make auto payments, banking policy has altered. Borrowers owing more than the automobile is worth when car prices decline but loan amounts remain high. Many people would rather have their automobiles seized by banks than struggle with unsustainable payments. Car Edge reveals the largest number of auto loan rejections in the last 10 years. Because they fear their clients will never repay them, some banks write off loans as absolute losses. CNN claims that this is just the beginning. Late order loan payments are expected to grow to 10% by 2024 before falling. According to famous Fitch analyst, debtors with worse credit scores are the first to experience economic hardship. And more than a third of Americans fall into this group. Some younger individuals, such as millennials and Gen Z, spend more for vehicles than they do for rent. You're here to find out what this means for you, your money, and the market. Car costs are decreasing year over year. If you're in the market for a new automobile, this is great news, with the exception of pickup vehicles, which increased by 7%. Though minor, it demonstrates that individuals are retaining utility vehicles used for work, which will boost their resale value. Unfortunately, used car costs are still 33% higher than they were before the outbreak, as are most other purchases today, including real estate, food, services, and stocks. This is to be anticipated given the 30% rise in the money supply. I realize they're not directly linked, but you get the idea. It's fascinating. According to Vehicle Scoops, used automobile buyers are purchasing vehicles that are twice as old as in 2019. Given that the typical automobile travels 10,000 to 15,000 miles each year, these older vehicles have 40,000 to 100,000 miles at the same price. This market position, however, does not ensure that prices will not decrease further. This brings us to the following point, car givebacks. This was proposed by Lucky Lopez of an automotive channel. The phrase, give my car back, is growing increasingly popular as automobile owners relinquish their loans and cars due to owing more than the car is worth and being unable to pay. Zero Hedge refers to this as the perfect storm. People are in debt because they took out enormous loans to purchase luxury automobiles that they could not afford. Loan delinquencies have reached an all-time high since 1994. This is unlikely to change very soon. Most automobiles are not investments. They depreciate in value. High interest financing of depreciable assets is undesirable. If customers are unable to pay, car repossessions and defaults will increase. Despite the fact that the housing crisis of 2008 has passed, more customers are struggling to pay $700 a month owing to higher interest rates, unemployment, and rising expenditures. If you can't afford a vehicle and you can't sell it because you owe more than it's worth, contact your bank to restructure your payments. Inquiring may save the bank money instead of repossessing the car and incurring a greater loss. If you're selling your automobile, you should obviously price it reasonably, take high quality images, and market it online. Finally, automobile acquisitions should be negotiated immediately. Take advantage of the market's movement in your favor and bargain hard. It all boils down to this, automobiles are not a good investment. Automobile values almost never grow over time, it's ridiculous. Accepting that automobiles are a losing industry may assist you when a salesman attempts to demand $90,000 for a Toyota RAV4. So, what are your thoughts on all of this? Let us know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to stay up to date in the world of economics.